Hello, everyone. This is Lori Barnes from Kepler College, and we are back with our second episode of Let's Talk Astro Mapping. We are super excited to be recording this in October of 2024 with a bit of a spooky type of theme on this particular video. I'm joined today by our host, Cindy McKeon, and also Joseph Milnes is joining us today. And we get to talk about a super interesting subject the Titanic. So tell me, I'd love to hear from both of you on what you're going to cover today. Maybe we'll start with Joseph. Like, what are you going to talk about with the Titanic? So I have done a lot of research on the Titanic and the astrology of it going back to 2017. When Cindy and I got together, we got curious about the astrocartography of it. We looked into it and we found a lot more behind the scenes than the astrology. We found the astrocartography of where it traveled and where it sank. And we found that there is an implication that the Titanic is still alive, so to speak, or that its chart is still active because there is clear significations that line up with it with planetary transits and with the astrocartography as well. We found some other things with Celine Dion and her chart, and we think that there's some connection with rich, famous people, Stockton Rush, James Cameron, who might be, you know, possibly reincarnated or they have some sort of like fate intertwined with the Titanic. So, yeah. So we're going to be looking at that with Joseph, and Joseph is definitely our resident expert on that since... Maybe he has a, a tie-in with the chart of the Titanic itself. But it was so interesting when we were looking at the Titan implosion and seeing how much it's actually connected to the Titanic itself. And we also wanted to touch a little bit on like frequency or vibration. Since astro mapping and astrology, when we're dealing with these celestial bodies, we're talking about luminosity. We're talking about the frequency of, of the light that comes through to our atmosphere. We're talking about its gravitational pull. So we also looked at it and said, well, what about like things that maybe were a little bit inappropriate, like names and how do names vibrate and how does that react? And even speaking of vibration, like look at Celine Dion's voice and how it vibrates and how it got everybody just really hooked and mesmerized by the whole thing. So we're going to be talking about a lot of different things with this Titanic and ultimately how it's just sank to the bottom of the ocean, unfortunately. We are going to talk about the Titanic and how it sank, possibly some reincarnation. Definitely, when we were talking about something so impactful like this, of course, Pluto is going to be involved. But there's a whole lot more than Pluto. But it's really eye-opening when we add the astral mapping to it what we see with Pluto. So it's not just the astrocartography, we'll be looking at the local space and we're using compass astrology with this too. First, we should talk about for the viewer, just the, the quick synopsis of the story of the Titanic. So just so you know what happened. So, and so you guys are freshened up on the details. On April 10th, 1912 at 12 p.m. Southampton, UK, the Titanic set off for its maiden voyage. So we would use the maiden voyage chart in this entire instance for various reasons. This is the official time that it would set sail to its destination. This just kind of goes with ancient philosophy and astrology. If there's anything that goes hand in hand together, it's sailing a ship and astrology. There's certain omens that we would look out for when sailing a ship for the first time. And we can definitely start gleaning in into the chart when and see it just so crystal clearly once you kind of just know the story so it set sail and it was supposed to be this grandiose ship we can see that with the leo rising too and it is the ship of dreams it was unsinkable there's a lot of hubris and uh, pompousness attached with it it was meant for only rich wealthy people that could get on the ship the ship fit about 3,000 people, 3,500. It was almost at full capacity when it set sail. And about four days into its trip, they received warnings of icebergs and did not heed the warnings. Instead, they steamed full speed ahead and in the middle of the night, in total darkness, they did not see the iceberg until it was too late. 
and steered away and hit the iceberg and it floundered. This unsinkable ship sunk in about two and a half hours. 1,500 people died, not from drowning per se, but from freezing to death of hypothermia in the ocean with only about a handful of people out of the occupancy surviving. So most of them women and children and those people regretted to live and carried the memory of hearing the screams of the people that passed. This ship carried on an echo of romanticism and has been retold. This story has been retold in art forms over and over and over, famously with the Titanic movie of 1997 by James Cameron and so forth. So what do we see in the astrology first? Because you really got to understand the astrology first. Because we're talking about when a ship flounders, it's called ill-fated. And especially on its maiden voyage. This ship, where do you see it? Where do we see the tail? And we see the grandiose, the hubrisness with the ascendant in Leo, right? We see that this luxury, this energy. And where is the sun? Because it rules Leo. It's there on the midheaven. So it's famous. It's pretty bold. It's arrogant. There's a lot of fire with this. And keep that in mind because these two points are very special points. And what we're going to talk about with the astrocartography, with the astrology, the timing of things, it comes into play. And some other things that come in that are very obvious that would be like, okay, we would see sun very close to the midheaven. So we would know that they were very near the sun on the midheaven line, just from the astrology. And here we have also Uranus very close to the descendant. Uranus and the moon are just below the descendant very angular there would be like the inverse of the fish eye if you could see below the horizon right and then mercury is retrograde as well all these little tidbits here come into play when we talk about a ship and then some other conditions as well like um, we have a uh, neptune in the 12th house and we have mars in the 12th house and cancer and mars in cancer fire water what are we talking about here well, little do most people know in their Titanic research is that there was talk, can the astrology uncover this mystery first and foremost? Can the astrocartography reveal this? Was there a coal fire on the ship? And this came out in the hearings after the floundering of the ship from people who worked there that there was a coal fire. And what happens when you have a coal fire? This ship was fueled by coal. So when you have a coal fire in the bunkers, they're about two and a half stories or more high of coal. And when the fire starts, they're silent. You, they, you don't know about them. And then when they rage on, they rage on. There is a documentary that kind of covers this. I recommend you look into this because it's an important vital piece of this research that kind of just briefly goes over everything that I'm talking about where there's some images that were uncovered that reveal this damage in the hull before the Titanic even set sail. 152 people of the original crew quit before setting sail, leaving only eight, before they had to rehire everybody because of this coal fire. And they talked about it in these hearings. And it really never got addressed or it never got the light of day. It brings up these questions like, why did the Titanic go full speed ahead into the icebergs? What was going on with this? Joseph mentioned Uranus on the descendant, Uranus in the moon, just under the descendant there, and how so many people quit last minute, and they were scrambling last minute to gain people. And if we look at the mundane interpretation of that, the moon is the people, and Uranus is the sudden disruption, and the descendant is where people are connecting with other people, how others work with you. And as you see, it's already lived out right before it even started on its voyage. It's already starting with a sudden disruption of the people. Another way to even look at it is if the ascendant represents where the ship is at and the descendant represent where the ship is going, then something along its destination is going to surprise them. Something big disruption. Those are other ways to look at that as well. The night that it hit the iceberg, Mercury retrograde started to get much tighter with the sun. And so we're looking at about, I think, less than a degree or about a degree of a conjunction. I think this is a combustion. And so Mercury, the planet of telecommunications and information and how we speak, how people think, 
definitely started to play a role even more so on this night when they had received the communications prior to and ignored it that came into play but then on this night another ship in the middle of the night had actually passed by and saw the titanic sending off flares and thought that they were sending off fireworks they didn't know if they were partying because back then there was no standard color for flares what they should be and there's a certain timing if you wanted to indicate warning there's a certain amount of timing that you need to pop them off at in order for someone to recognize it to be a warning. At this stage, people were panicking by the time that they were sending off the flares, just sending them off. I think it was like almost eight at a time. And so they just thought it was a fireworks show and just passed on by and ignored the, the warning. So, you know, the astrology and the transits come into play while the astrocartography is there. And we'll show you that in a second because that's really exciting. But the moon is also getting closer and closer to newness and it is dark. I mean, this is below the horizon and mind you, it is total darkness. The only planets above the horizon would be Mars and Pluto and Neptune, the gods of death, the gods of fear and panic and the gods of the ocean, right? So these come into, you know, all the darkness, all of that comes into play. And we have a loss of light, which adds to the fear, adds to the panic, adds to the whole spookiness of this, right? So that's our general astrology of it, but it just doesn't end there. The Titanic keeps ticking. It is a community of people in some ways, and there was that big disruption in there. We have Uranus going right into the third house there. And third house is still below the horizon. I mean, it is hitting... It's not like it hits it directly under its belly. It's somewhat side and underneath. And I wonder, you know, it would be interesting if we actually did use the compass astrology. We didn't for seeing where the iceberg hit on the ship. But it would be interesting to look into. Maybe that's something the audience one day with us could look into. The Titanic is really just one of those astrology pieces that just keeps on giving. You think story's over, that's the end of it. But... In all of reality, the ship is still there. It's still physically present, and it's at the bottom of the ocean, and it is actually known as a gravesite. James Cameron has visited down here numerous times. They go on expeditions, and they leave little plaques and remembrances, and this place is littered with the clothes and memorabilia and personal items of the victims of the people who died on this ship and went down with it so this place is in itself a like i don't know what you, if you want to say it's haunted but it is a grave site and it is a very eerie place to visit why on earth anybody would want to go to the bottom of the ocean and risk dying just to see this is the power that the titanic has over people and you'll see this coming up if you think about it like if we're getting into magic or even astrological magic one of the most the ways that you could really add energy into a product. Like, you know, I have this pen. Remember that famous little blue necklace that they had as the centerpiece of the movie that they did with Leonardo DiCaprio? Someone's holding on to it normal and they have their energy on it. That's one thing. But if they're holding on to it and they're screaming and they know they're on the brink of death, well, that just injects that much more energy in there. Maybe that's actually left in the items that had sunk and that's still putting out that pull, that force, not to mention, like Joseph meant, said, the reincarnation, if possible, or the living, the staying alive of the souls, the staying alive of the energy of the Titanic. And it makes me think about how the genre of true crime has just really exploded as well. Netflix, there's all these new movies. There's just so much intrigue. And this energy, yeah, it's like you're saying, it's still present. And you're talking about that physical piece of the boat still being down at the bottom I, I guess I should call it a ship but it's also out here in the universe because people talk about it all the time like it's a story that people never get tired of hearing about Joseph I think you said earlier it's astrology that keeps giving and giving and giving so I can't wait to see the astrocartography we have a birth chart for it now so therefore we have an astrocartography chart we have all the tools we need now to get ready to start executing the next phase of research but we also have a location the latitude and longitude for where it sinks so now we know where it's at 
astrocartography is planned, it's conjunct the angles. We're also going to be using compass astrology and local space lines, and I'll explain what each of those means when we get to it. So when we have the planets conjunct the angles, we could probably expect to see maybe Mercury or the sun nearby the midheaven of where it took off, and then it lays down all the lines around the rest of the Earth, and that, like our natal chart is fixed, that grid is fixed. So it is going to be sailing towards crossings and lines and parans. And it is also going to be sailing, maybe, maybe not. We take a look and we'll see on any of its local space lines. Here is the um, astrocartography of the maiden voyage of the ship. What we see here is that it's nearby Southampton, England. And we do see the sun on the midheaven at the top of the chart, as we would expect. And this is approximately the place that the ship sank. So it was between its Jupiter descendant line and its Mars ascendant line. And that's kind of interesting because the name is Titanic and Jupiter is about expansiveness and things that are giant. And we're talking about things that have sunk. There's something that ripped through its hull, essentially. So we could kind of see that with maybe the energy it carried over from Mars as it was before it reached the iceberg. We could also look at our local space or our compass astrology. And when we're looking at that for the maiden voyage, now we always use true north for the compass directions. When we're looking, we could see that the sun indeed was almost exactly above the southern cardinal direction of the location that they were launching from. So they did have a lot of planets above the horizon at the time, from Neptune to Mars, Pluto, Saturn. We only have a few planets that were below the horizon. Interestingly, Jupiter and Mars would have been below the horizon at the time of the launch. And if you think about it in traditional astrology, traditional astrology said that Jupiter would rule the oceans. And then we got new astrology where Neptune now rules the oceans. Either way, we still have some kind of signature that comes up from that. When we lay out the planetary lines, now it's a horizon system. This is no longer about planets conjunct the angles. It's about the perspective of where we see the planets in the sky, specifically from the location that we are. Because if they were on the same longitudinal line and they went south to a certain latitude, the way that these planets are splayed out would change. Interestingly, we could see that it looks like where it sank is nearby a line. Is it any surprise to anybody that it's a Pluto line? So well, imagine that. It was actually traveling along its Pluto line. If we want to go to the, the next slide and show them the path. It actually, this is the path that the Titanic traveled. And so in its local space, it pretty much was traveling along its Pluto line, so in between its Sun and its Mars. Now, Mars in a day chart is way more malefic than Mars in a night chart. So the fire is on. And I want to kind of hone back on that part of the story real quick, because the astrocartography is now telling another story about fire. Why is Mars so involved? It's not just about fear and panic and injury and like the puncture wound that the Titanic suffered. But it's also about this coal fire. We can see it crosses over this Mars on the ascendant line in astrocartography. It crosses over its Pluto on the ascendant line in astrocartography. It's traveling on its Pluto line. What happens when you have a 1800 degree fire? And that's what they said it was, an 1800 degree fire going on in a hole. And then it strikes and gets hit with ice cold water. You get brittleness and cracking. And the Titanic broke in half. This is supposed to be an unsinkable ship, yet it snaps in two like a Kit Kat bar, and it's done for in less than two hours. We can see now, is it because they knew the fire and were trying to get to their destination? There's some stuff in that documentary that talk about the money situation with the company and trying to make their destination on time and trying to live up to all the expectations because this thing could have actually financially floundered them as well. So... We can start seeing the story being told that this fire theme with the ascendant, the midheaven, the sun placement, the astrocartography, there's a lot of heat, fire energy 
going on with the Titanic in the middle of this ice cold ocean. The other thing too, is that where does the ill fate come in? You know, you would think that you could blame it all on Pluto and Mars, but it's already on its Pluto. It's already traveling along the course. What changed the fortune after it crossed over its Mars descendant line, it carried that energy over before hitting and coming into contact with its Jupiter on the ascendant line. And Jupiter in the natal chart of the Titanic is retrograde. In the chart, you would look at this and say, oh, but the sun is trying Jupiter. You would think that's a fortunate aspect, but the sun was trying Jupiter in the natal chart of the Titanic. You would normally think that's a beneficial aspect. That's great. But in reality, the only time that we see Jupiter trying the sun is when Jupiter is going direct or when it's going retrograde. It's either or. It's the only time we see the trine. You either get the trine when it's direct, when it's just gone direct, or when it's just gone retrograde. And in this case, it is the retrograde Jupiter. So we have a retrograde Jupiter reversing the luck and sucking in the vitality of the sun, or at least taking it away. What does Jupiter represent? Abundance. And if it's functionality is inverted, then it is taking away all of that protection, at least inverting it. So that's where I think that the astrocartography kind of locks it in and says, there you are. And you're yeah. referring to the midpoint, right? Because it's kind of between the Mars and the Jupiter line. So it's when it gets near that midpoint is when it all just. Yeah. Yeah. It started like picking up the light or sort of the rays, so to speak, of Jupiter after it was carried on over from its Mars. And it's already traveled over its Pluto as well. So it's hit carrying over and it's traveling on its Pluto line. And, you know, all the factors come into play, the transits, everything. You were talking about the sun trine Jupiter, and that in indeed is right there. And we had Mars not exactly making an aspect with the sun, but it is kind of a loose sextile there. I mean, if we were generous with our orbs, but it is definitely making a sextile with the retrograde Mercury. And that could explain some of that excess pushing that happened. Now, if we're going to be looking at the astro maps all together, now this looks like a lot of lines here. Remember how we got here. We looked at the astro cartography. We also added the local space lines. We put them together like this, and then we mapped on top of it the path in bright green that the Titanic was taking and meant to take going forward. If you could see at the bottom here, this is where the coordinates are of where it sank. And we have that marked on the map over here. What we have going on with this interesting section of the chart and i'm going to have to zoom in and zoom out with you guys to see a bit more of this we do have mars on the ascendant that it already passed let's just go over to the beginning over here what happened is as it left southampton it first had sailed a little bit in between its mars and its pluto line the pluto is at the top that's the gray line the mars is the red and then we could see its path. And it made its first turn, interestingly enough, where it was Venus on the midheaven and a moon descendant. So we can't really see a whole lot of significance about that. It's a crossing, which might have felt very positive. I would imagine at this time that it happened, everything was pretty jubilant and everybody was still pretty good. But we still have a little bit of the influence from its Neptune on the ascendant line. So in other words, we're getting close to here and we're gonna have some influence from Neptune, maybe possibly blinding what's gonna be coming up next or giving it a cloak of invisibility. Remember that when it did hit the iceberg and it was sending out flares and the SOSs, it just wasn't really reached. There was a lot of miscommunication. I think Neptune has a lot to do with that as well. It keeps on going on its voyage and it's on its Pluto line. You might be able to see that little gray line right below it. So it's not always exactly on it, but it's very close to it. And it's happening right between the Jupiter at the top and the Mars at the bottom of the local space lines. And then we get to somewhere that ends up being very important. We are going to see its Chiron line and the Chiron, it's nearby to... I mean, there's a lot of crossings here. I mean, this is super, super faded. 
So we have Chiron that's crossing a Pluto local space line. That's Chiron on the Midheaven astrocartography over the Pluto local space line. We also have that same Chiron conjunct the Midheaven and astrocartography line that is crossing the Mars astrocartography ascendant line. And it is also the Mars local space line that's crossing over that Chiron Midheaven. And that Mars local space line is crossing over the Mars ascendant astrocartography line all together. This is like a three point system. We are going to be talking about destiny points in the next episode, by the way. Holy moly, is this a destiny point? It's not exactly there, but it is within the two degrees of where the Titanic sank on its same latitude. So it was almost as if there was something there calling, not to mention, we cannot miss, of course, what has happened here with the astrocartography lines of Chiron and the Midheaven with Pluto on the Ascendant. And both of those are crossing around the Pluto local space line path. And as the ship keeps on going, that Pluto local space line crosses over the astrocartography mars on the ascendant this is carrying so much energy and frequency i mean we cannot really get we're carrying this super heavy load of energy really what should have been done is say it had to take this role maybe there is some remediation that we could have done ahead of time to either minimize or totally avoid all of the catastrophe that was supposed to happen exactly at this point of the ocean. Furthermore, we are mentioning midpoints at some level, right? This is the midpoint in the astrocartography lines between Mars on the ascendant and Jupiter on the descendant. It was within orb of these two. We're in the midpoint of them. When we're talking midpoints, that's another destiny point, by the way. So this ship is loaded, super loaded. And as you see, it was actually supposed to cross over nearby where the Pluto local space line would have been crossing over the Jupiter astrocartography, Jupiter on the descendant. Jim Lewis would say that when you mix Jupiter and Pluto together, it is something huge. And he usually talks about it in terms of good luck and lotteries and you know, big, huge jackpots. But if you think about it, it was within a very faint orb. But look at all the richness that was in that boat that sank in that area. There were some treasure hunters that went to go and retrieve some of that. Well, that is like a big part of the astro mapping that we wanted to talk about. However, we wanted to also mention something called geospatial aspects. So if I'm seeing this right, this ship, the Titanic went down in between its astrocartography, Mars and Jupiter line, and its local space, Mars and Jupiter line. It's between, you know, those two points that Cindy talked about with the Pluto and the Mars crossings. It's like it traveled between, like it was in between the two eyes of the planets, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, the Pluto and Mars eyes. And then Jupiter, it's almost like it goes to hit Jupiter. And look, it's on the Pluto local space. It's between the sun and the Mars, the fire local space. And it's like Jupiter, because we know the sun's vitality. We know the Mars is energy and motion. We know Pluto is the death, right? And Jupiter would be the fate. And because it's reversed or in its fortune, it says, this is where you stop. That's just fascinating to look at that box. The Titanic's right in the middle, and the Pluto line is there right in the middle. You two do astrocartography, astromapping, local space. This is something that you specialize in. So how often have you seen charts of events where you have the local space lines in the middle of the local space and the astrocartography and the same two lines? Like, is this a more rare occurrence? This is the magic of looking at astro mapping. Like a lot of people would look only at the astrocartography and they would skip the local space or the compass. So when we bring it all together, 
this is something you could find is actually rather common where you would find an event happening at a certain location. And it's interesting how you could sometimes see how things also are tied to eclipse paths when we're adding in the astro mapping, like an, yet another aspect of astro mapping. These two techniques, it appears that astrocartography and local space from this kind of research, that they go hand in hand. They work together, not so much separately, though they do. If you're trying to do this, you're looking at a local space and an astrocartography map, and you're combining the two techniques, do you always use the natal chart or do you use a relocated chart? It depends on what it is you're doing, because it would be the natal chart for like something like this. But if you're relocating and you are actively relocating, then we can definitely use the tool like the geospatial aspects and relocated charts then to work with it. So it depends if we're dealing with a where you're at now. We would have done more on the relocation of the Titanic and where it's at currently, but I haven't really built into my software about how to deal with the ocean like that. So I'm going to go back and do that so I can do more research. When Neptune is on the Ascendant, it's something where sometimes you're invisible. It's very tough sometimes to be seen or you're overseen. Luckily, he does have the sun up there, but there's also Mercury re retrograde up nearby the midheaven. That really is supposed to shine the light. But what happens when all this water, all this heat comes onto the light? It's evaporation. There is something that's already kind of written to its chart about it getting quote unquote lost, so to speak. We know where it is, but it is lost in some ways in that it's very hard to reach. It was very hard to communicate with it. However, the big part of the story when we're looking at the astrocartography of it, like you said, the whole astro mapping, the local space, the geospatial aspects does happen within this box of all these crossings here that are so repetitive. So when we're looking at its compass astrology chart, it looks like there is Neptune. It looks like it's just above the horizon there. And we have Uranus and the moon and Jupiter below the horizon. And that's interesting because that Uranus moon Remember when we were looking at the natal chart of the Titanic and it has Uranus moon here on its descendant. There's some kind of suddenness that happens. When we look at the compass astrology, we could see that the suddenness is probably something it would have never seen coming, which is even more appropriate for Uranus. Could represent that there is something that it could have hit underground perhaps. And it would have been in a very large fashion with Jupiter under the horizon there. When we look at the geospatial aspect of the sky from the point of view of Southampton at the time that it was taking off, this is how they would have seen the planets in the sky in their azimuth, the visible horizon all around them. Now, local space or compass astrology is a topocentric, a horizon-based system. It's, it's different from the astrocartography system, but we're still looking at different aspects. I don't know if you've ever seen those sculptures that are perspective sculptures, and on one side, it might look like a flock of birds, and then as you turn and you get to the front, it looks like an eyeball or something. Here, what you could see is that there was an inconjunct between Jupiter and Neptune. There was another inconjunct. And this is a big deal between Pluto and Uranus with the moon. We have the sun here that is square Mars. There's some of that hubris that comes into play. And we have a bit of an attraction of what this Titanic is. Everybody's happy to get on because we could see that Mars actually making a positive aspect there. And we have an aspects list chart. I outlined the ones that are very important. So from this we could look and see that actually the sun was square Mars. To me, that indicates a lot of hubris or even the captain saying, let's trudge forward. We have something to, you know, our name, our reputation, let's get forward, let's move ahead. So it's not one of those things that was positive. The whole Uranus and Mars conjunction, we already talked about it a little bit with the people that were supposed to work for the boat and then they, or the ship and they left last minute and they had to scramble to get new people. But also the moon in the mundane sense could represent the people. It also represents women and children. Uranus, of course, as we know, is the suddenness. Then we have the trine between 
Venus and Mars. It was attractive. It was prestigious to go on there. Sure, we're going to go on. It's a safe place. We have Jupiter in conjunct Neptune. Well, the hubris that comes involved was, I remember in the movie, he knocked on the hull of the boat and he's like, God himself couldn't sink the ship. Oh, watch your words there. And then we have Uranus and Pluto making it in conjunct. These outer planets are going to be something that are super spectacular. I actually wanted to touch on the one last thing before we move on to the next phase, because I think this is going to wrap up the first phase here pretty much, like as far as what we can see with where our starting point is with the Titanic. Part of that hubris as well, and with the energy of this, is the name of the Titanic itself. We know that it's named after the Titans, the Greek Titans, because its sister ship was named the Olympic. So we have the Olympians and the Titans. It was a very clear reference that they made in the names. And long story short, when it comes to names, and this goes back to ancient times and ancient religions that like vocalization and saying something into reality, speaking something has a lot of weight and a lot of energy. Vocalization is vibrations. And so a name carries magic or carries power. And they named it after the Titans or the fallen gods of ancient Greece that were locked into Tartarus. And it's essentially, you know, a Greek hell. It's a place of punishment. It's the depths. It's the darkness. It's locked away. And it is said that Zeus was the one that was responsible. He used his thunderbolts and struck them into Tartarus and uses thunderbolts and casts them down into Tartarus. And in the astrocartography, we see that right as it comes into contact with Jupiter, that it is struck down into Tartarus. I mean, the bottom of the ocean. So it's almost like the name itself carries echoes of the story from the Greek mythos. So it's one of those lessons of (laughs) <laughs> you wouldn't name your kid something really offensive or something that carries the energy. Not only that, it's with the Jupiter, like they say too much of something is not good for you, right? So maybe adding the Titan with the Jupiter, with the hubris. And Jupiter was also the god of lightning. What happens when you do something wrong? Sometimes people say, may God strike you down. And there we are right in the middle of where Jupiter was in the chart. And of course, Mars and Pluto. And it goes to where Tartarus, where Pluto rules. We're going to talk about the reincarnation of this next. When you start looking at kind of the big name people and the people that got involved with the most recent production or reanimation of the Titanic story, and that would be the Titanic movie from 1997. And you look at someone like Celine Dion, who had a bigger part of a role in the movie than other characters or even the characters of the movie because she sang the theme song and this theme song it's famous everybody knows this song they know it as the titanic song they know it as my heart will go on everyone knows this song but everyone also knows celine dion you look at her chart because it's just out of curiosity and we find that lo and behold in her natal chart she too is also a Leo rising, very close to the same degrees as the Titanic. She also has a Jupiter retrograde. She also has a sun in Aries and a midheaven in Aries, like the Titanic. Difference is is that the Saturn is conjunct the midheaven in her chart. She does have some water placements like the Venus and Mercury in the eighth house in Pisces. And she has the Neptune retrograde in Scorpio. And we have a moon Mars thing going on. Now, her moon is at 29 degrees Aries. It's an anoretic degree. This comes up later, the anoretic degree, 27 degrees, 29 degrees comes up in replay later with this. So we start to see synchronicities. And with angles being closely conjunct the Titanic's, if we want to show the Titanic's natal chart, Cindy, When we have things really close to the angles in natal chart comparisons, it almost implies a pool or a magnetism, especially when they're like the same or opposing angles. There's some sort of magnetism when they're when they're identical or opposing angles. Then when you start seeing, okay, they have the similar midheaven, there's something going on, they have similar ascendance. It's obvious we know that she has something to do with the Titanic. What 
came about is eventually 20 years later after the movie was a recent transit the billboard music awards is about and she comes out and it's the uh she's they're doing honor of the song and 20th celebration and she's singing live at the billboard music awards my heart will go on for the first time in a long time and it's actually since the first time since a her husband passed away that she performs this song and i think it was after her brother passed away so she's been through some hardship at this point this night is may 21st 2017 it was in the evening they just come on and start playing the song they're playing it live and lo and behold we see transit venus the planet of fame and music and art and all those worldly parts of that come with fame and fortune sitting tightly on this midheaven point and on her saturn in between her sun her north node and the moon by the way is there too so don't for, you know we can't not factor in that the moon is shining a lot light on there adding to the spotlight that that's being shined there and you know the moon has a wide orb so we can definitely say that that the moon is coupled with it as a result you're going to have the same aspect with the titanic as we see in the Titanic's chart, Venus is also approaching its midheaven and it's approaching its sun. And the moon is there in its ninth house. And so we can see that this Venus is active. What ends up happening is you have this supercharge. And this is spooky. It's like you're looking at a screen and you see Celine Dion and behind her is a screen of the Titanic a picture of the Titanic itself, image, it's reimagined as if it was still alive there. It's a box in a box, and you're looking at both individuals, their natal charts, the transit is illuminated on both of them. This image is kind of eerie in itself just to me personally, because you have a bunch, it looks like there's a bunch of people in the ocean right there as she's singing, and you got the ocean right there. I mean, it's just a very, if astrology doesn't tell you that reincarnation is possible, or at least at the very bare minimum that the Titanic chart is still active and alive, I don't know what will, because this night is very clear that the spotlight Venus is shining a light on not just Celine Dion, but the Titanic too. And it, the, here it is in picture form from a recording of the Billboard Music Awards. You can, uh, we'll share a link to that music video at the end here, but there it is, Venus on the midheaven of Titanic and Celine Dion right before your eyes. And Joseph, I think what happened too, I remember when we first started doing this together, you actually were able to watch it and time it. And that's how you were able to be like, holy cow, look at how tight these orbs are with each other for you know the Titanic, Celine Dion, and the Billboard Music Awards. And it happened almost right down to the second. Where, where she's mentioning, you know, the Titanic and my heart will go on. Furthermore, she has this kind of sireny type of way of singing it. And if we think about ships, one of the things that they always had to watch out for were like the sirens, the beautiful women that would sing and it would be alluring for these ships and kind of, it would usually set them to ill-fatedness, to crashing or sinking or just like, the Titanic did hitting an iceberg. Not that Celine Dion obviously did this or that we're saying that there's any quantum travel, but it does fit the mood of what is a tragedy that's about to happen there. It's like the echo of energy and there is no time. Time doesn't really exist when you're thinking about the multidimensionality of things. And that's how I'm hearing it. It was just an echo. It just syncs up with these different events, if you took time out of the picture, they're vibrating the same frequency. Think about even the song itself that she's singing. The song is about my soul will continue after death. That's really what it's about. It's really eerie. It begs the question, is Celine Dion a reincarnated person from the ship who is, has to relive her fame and fortune? and gets a second chance at happiness. How many other people are possibly also reincarnated from the ship that are still pulled with? Is James Cameron one of those people? Maybe not so much Leonardo DiCaprio, but the people who seem to be touched by it. 
Because Celine Dion, in this song, she actually didn't want to sing it. She didn't really like it, but she did it anyway. And now it's a major part of her career. It's a major part of her heart now. It's just become this big thing for her. And so in a way, this movie, even though she doesn't, maybe she may not remember that past life. Maybe it's totally blocked out for her. No matter what, this movie still impacted her career and impacted her life. Obviously, the Midheaven is involved. You know, how many other wealthy, famous people that have been reincarnated how many people that are not wealthy and famous you know it just it begs all these questions because there are a lot of people that are tied to it and this the titanic has this strong pool it obsesses people to the point that they reenact it they want to you know recreate it they go into studying there's museums there's an obsessive historianism about it it's got its own thing as far as interest in its own research and historicity and there's a whole interest in it as far as it having its own fanaticism and, and it drives about... people to the bottom of the ocean to this day <laughs> to just to go look at it and if we're talking about the historianism in it it's like her song and her performance kind of brought the Saturn there, the Venus on the Saturn, so to speak. I don't remember what phase the moon was in, but it kind of illuminates if it was in a phase where we could see it, if it was a bigger moon. That was, oh, it's way, actually the in a thing... similar phase as the, as the Titanic. It's a waning moon, so it's the same phase as the Titanic's natal chart. So that's interesting because if we added a little snapshot of how the moon would have looked like on the day that it sank, we're not getting a lot of light from that moon. So in other words, it's almost like they're working in total darkness there. And it was not an overcast day either. When they left, the moon was just under half. They would have had more light to work with. Maybe they should have planned their voyage when there would have been more moonlight or there would have been a waxing moon. When we get to, we're talking about reincarnation and is she, the whole point there is that it keeps on kind of getting brought up into our consciousness. And whether it's from Celine Dion, who may or may not have been reincarnated, or whether it's through a different, like the BMA awards, like actually it's interesting because speaking of reincarnation, she brought life back to the Billboard Music Awards. They were almost thinking, should we wrap it up? Because their ratings were getting pretty low. And the Atlantic, there's no irony there that the newspaper called the Atlantic, and that's the ocean that the ship sank in is reporting Celine Dion saved the Billboard Music Awards with My Heart Will Go On, and that's tied in with the sinking of the ship. Speaking of reincarnation and things bringing news back, and it's actually kind of been in the news lately. Do you remember the Titan submersible? And the CEO, Stockton Rush, is married to a woman who's, it was either her great-great or her great-great-great-grandparents were actually on the ship and they went down with it. So there is special meaning tied in with them. And, you know, we're talking about where there was like this Uranus type of suddenness and an implosion. And here it is at the bottom of the ocean, somewhat nearby where the Titanic had actually sunk. If we look at the Titanic maiden voyage with the time of the Titan implosion, we don't have a birth chart, unfortunately, from when the Titan was created, but we do have what we could call a death chart. Look at all the conjunctions here. I mean, we can't make this up. Pluto is on the moon and the Uranus of the Titanic. And we have a Saturn on Chiron. Remember that Chiron line that was so predominant? We have Chiron nearly conjunct the sun and we have it nearly conjunct the North Node there, there was something faded for it to fall there. We have Uranus conjunct the, so Titan's Uranus, the death of or the fall of Titan's Uranus conjunct the Saturn, the Saturn of the Titanic maiden voyage. And then we have exact degrees of the sun on Pluto of the Titanic. And we also have the moon there as well on top of the Mars. So it kind of gives you a story that something big was inevitable to happen. If we're looking at, you know, we want to do apples to apples, death chart to death chart, so to speak, and the submersion of the Titanic, we still have a lot of conjunctions there, like the sun conjunct Titan's Pluto, the falling of Titan's Pluto. 
it did bring light to that again. Remember, it was like it made national headline, international headlines, as a matter of fact, that, oh, my gosh, we have news that this submarine, it disappeared. Where in the world did it go? What in the world happened to it? It took about two and a half hours to get a confirmation to find out it's imploded. And it took about two and a half hours for the Titanic from the time it was impacted for it to finally sink. Look at all the parallels we have going on there. And it's still very active and alive when it comes to how we reimagine, right? The Titanic. And again, it was personal to the CEO, the CEO's wife, but it made it feel like it was personal to everybody when it made international news. I don't think it took two and a half hours for it to be confirmed because it was actually like the search was like almost over a week for them. There was a countdown for how many hours they had to breathe. There was a certain point where they were anticipating if it didn't implode, well, how much time they would have had left. So there was a certain amount of time that they did do the research on it. But the thing with the Titan sub is that we have a repeat of the Titanic story in kind of mini form where you have this rich guy who is ignoring all the warnings. And that's what it came out with all of the hearings, especially in recent weeks, is he knew what he was doing. He was ignoring all of the warnings and regulations. And he was told over and over and over not to do X, Y, and Z. And he said, I'm going to do it anyway because I'm innovating. And he chose and he knew what he was doing with the Titan sub. His obsession with it brought him down there. He did go multiple times, but it was his arrogance and his wealth and his unwillingness to listen that was a repeat of the fate of the Titanic. And here we have some old blood tie to it, which is some synchronicity. And then, of course, you have the fact that where is it sunk? Where did it implode? Right by the Titanic. It's going to be in contact with all the, the Titanic's astrocartography and local space lines. It's there in the vortex, that box. It's, you know, it's got pulled in. So it makes you wonder if the Titanic is more than just, yeah, there's reincarnation, but there's repeats or like it's a curse or something that just makes people pull and just maybe it emanates or like it possesses and animates through things it's still reliving and still repeating fate this is a, would be a considered a cursed place and you know it would even came out that the titan sub in stockton rush that they had even gotten trapped inside the titanic for in one of their excursions now this place is a grave site they've technically desecrated a grave site and tampered with it in their little excavations that's not good energy we could cut the pie in a million ways, but Celine Dion, too, the astrocartography, you know, her birthplace is also in a sweet spot. When we've done a lot of research on this. You could, and we could spend a lot of time going with her ACG, the Titanics, and, you know, the, the, the Titan sub. But what we really see is that the Titanic chart is still at play. It's alive. It's something about its location, something about its natal chart, its transits. If there's a haunted chart or if it's a ghost ship or whatever, we don't know what to call it. Maybe this is what you guys can help with. What do you guys think? What well, is the Titanic? Right. Well, I think considering that the Titan had many other dives, right? And there's the reports that have come out in the news of the problems, but yet the incident where it imploded happened on this particular voyage. There were other potential locations where it could have gone far more wrong. I mean, they had problems, but they survived. But this is the one where they didn't survive. And of course, everybody's going to make their own decision for what they believe. When we get into this, you know, belief system, for me, it's like, yeah, it seems like this location has this vibration. And maybe it wasn't there before the Titanic sunk. But it did sink, and it is a big story, and it does continue to be in our consciousness. And Celine Dion has definitely been a part of that. People tend to love this kind of story because there's a human story, and it's a tragedy, and so many different people with their stories, the people who lived, the people who died, and what the people who lived did after they got back to land. It's just fascinating. Stockton Rush. We don't have his birth time, but he was an Aries. And he did interviews where he's like, if you get rid of risk from your life, then why even get out of bed? 
because getting out of bed is a risk. Following the rules is a risk. And he did talk about, again, like there was safety, but it was about like, he kind of tried to redesign the safety. One of the things that they talked about was maybe there was an electrical glitch that happened. And you kind of wonder if that ties in with Uranus and Saturn over here, where something electric would have happened to the structure and helped it with its implosion, so to speak. When it comes down to it, like we come up with these conclusions of there is an indication of a fire that was supported in the charts, as Joseph talked about it, and that the Titanic chart is active or it's energetically alive still. There's still that vibration, that energy that it vibrates to, that you could tap into the frequency of it. We could talk about it being a cursed ship because the name of the ship, Titanic, I mean, imagine you don't ever have a child. You don't name your child God. I never heard anybody say, my child is God, right? I mean, just the timing of it. And then on top of that, when we look at the, the location of it, where we were talking about it being energetically almost right in the center of the box between the Jupiter and the Mars, and then there's uh, Pluto coming into play. The other thing, inconclusively, we don't know, we're keeping this open for you guys, is Celine Dion, a reincarnated soul from the Titanic? Was the Titan cursed because of the location or the intention? Or the name, because remember, the Titan is, in it, they named it Titan, flat yes. out. Again, it carries the same energy. It's almost as if it, you call it, vocalize it. It's kind of funny because Titan is a smaller version of Titanic, right? So it's almost like naming it after something that already had a tragedy. No one's going to want to name something after a tragedy. Like no one ever really wanted to put up a new place during something that a curse happened and give it the same name, right? If there are ghosts, and of course that's for each of us to decide what we believe, if there are spirits that continue to be there and they see this little mini Titan, maybe I've seen too many ghost movies, but you know, it is about electricity, right? And things going wrong. So just to go there, go a little supernatural in the month of October. <laughs> this is a real thing that happened is a real ship with you know real time real people really died and that is a real gravesite. i mean that is a real displacement of energy and it's still got people going there i personally think as long as the ship is still there it's going to carry the energy until whatever it is that's eating it away it fully finishes the job that's what i think it took a while for us to get a confirmation about a Titan or to get news that something happened. And it's the same thing with the Titanic. It took a while. Like flares are being shot off from the ship and nobody around it is even noticing. So look at like how, again, in that spot, there's a delay of communication. What we discovered with the Titanic, it's inconclusive, but it's suggestive that there is reincarnation. The chart is still alive. I think this indicates that the astrology, the astrocartography does confirm that this coal fire played a much bigger role in the sinking of the ship than it is known or accepted or than what is portrayed in art. I do think that the location itself of where it's at is a place that you probably wouldn't want to go visit. And I think that it implies something even bigger. If we have something like this with a ship that we all know is famous. We're lucky that we have times for this. But what does it imply about much older things like the pyramids? Do they have their own astrophotography? Because we don't know. We we don't have the birth charts for those anymore. Maybe they are written and we can't interpret it. But there must be other things out there that also have this kind of energy. And I think that we can start looking into that kind of thing now that we have astrocartography, local space, compass astrology to help us. If you guys want to check out the Atlantic article, see it for yourself. Celine Dion saved the BMAs. There it is there. And here is the YouTube link as well for My Heart Will Go On at the Billboard Music Awards 2017. You can also just search for that too. It's got lots of views. You, you can't not miss it. Wikipedia for the definition and the history of the Greek mythos of the Titans. And in there will be some interesting links to some of the deities you may want to read about, like Oceanus and Zeus. Get some more brushed up on your astrology that way. And then here's the Wikipedia for Tartarus. There's a section in there where they talk about Zeus striking down the Titans into Tartarus. 
Titanic's Fatal Fire. This is a documentary I recommend people check out. It's on Amazon Prime, Paramount Plus. This goes into the coal fire tidbits of the research. If you type in Titan Wikipedia, that's where you could get the exact time and location, the coordinates itself of where it imploded. They use the exact time of when communication was cut off. Well, this has been really interesting, super informative. Thanks to our audience for watching. We would love to hear your comments, your thoughts, your conclusions. Please put your comments below. Let us know if you have other ideas of places we can look at. This is a series. We'll be back with another episode next month. So please feel free to let us know what you want to hear more about for astro mapping, which includes the astrocartography and the local space, the compass astrology, and geodetics. So if you want to learn more, of course, we have a course or two or three or five. <laughs> it's a growing certificate. We have many courses on astro mapping. So please check out our website. You can see what courses are coming up next. Cindy and Joseph both teach at Kepler College. And I'm lucky enough to be able to be a teaching assistant with Cindy. So we hope to see you in class. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Joseph. Really appreciate it.